sorry I can't be with you, but I've got a lot of work to do here. As we know, good wine needs good grapes. But bitters vinifera vines, even old ones like this, are susceptible to fungal infections, mildews and competition for weeds. The usual method for protecting vines from such pests is, no, not this, it's spraying pesticides. But since pesticides are designed to kill or control unwanted pests, weeds and moulds, they are inherently toxic. They can also harm the people, wildlife and the environment. So we, the public, wine drinkers, vineyard workers, need to be protected from its dangers. The day-to-day -day work to regulate pesticides is carried out by the Chemicals Regulations Directorate, which is part of the Health and Safety Executive. The way pesticide legislation works in the European Union is that the active substances in the product are assessed at EU level and if they're okay are placed on the approved list of active substances. Member states such as the UK then check all the things not covered in the EU assessment. So any plant protection product used in a UK vineyard must have been okay for use by the Chemicals Regulation Directorate. The UK Vineyards Association publishes a pesticides book every year. This lists all on and off label approvals for grapevines in the UK with detailed usage notes for off label chemicals. The pesticides book is free to UK VA members and is issued each February in time for the growing season. The bottom line on staying legal is only to buy pesticides that carry a MAF, MAP or HSC approval number on the label on the container and to be aware of offers of cheap pesticides as these may be illegal unapproved products. And just because a product is being used elsewhere in Europe doesn't mean you can use it in England. These give advice to users, suppliers and others on their legal responsibilities and how to meet them. The relevant code of practice for UK vineyard workers is the Plant Protection Products Sustainable Use Regulations 2012, which covers the marketing and use of pesticides, residues in food and other areas affected by pesticide degradation and disposal. Anyone spraying plant protection products has to follow this code. The aim of it is to get anyone involved in crop growing to take all reasonable precautions when using pesticides to protect the health of human beings, creatures and the environment. So here are some tips on staying legal. It's not enough to buy legal products. Vineyard managers also have to keep accurate spraying records.
you also have to have the certificate of competence. If you're old, basically born before the end of December 1964, and suitably trained, you didn't need a certificate. But that's about to change. These so-called grandfather's rights are to be scrapped, and everyone who uses plant protection products authorised for professional use must have a certificate of competence. It will also be an offence to purchase such products if you know the intended end user isn't suitably qualified. Handling and storage of pesticides, including disposal of tank mixtures and packaging, are covered by regulations relating to disposing of waste and hazardous waste. Many plant protection products have an aquatic buffer zone requirement printed on the label to protect the aquatic environment. If you can't or don't want to apply the buffer zone uh, specified on the label, you have to carry out and record a local environment risk assessment for pesticides. If you follow what it says on the label, you still have to record what you did in this way record. But if you follow this code of practice, because it is a statutory code of practice, then if you're ever prosecuted under pesticide laws, you can use it in your defence. Enforcement is through prosecution and the issuing of enforcement notices. It can be done through the Health and Safety Executive local authorities and the agriculture departments. They all say offenders are prosecuted whenever sufficient evidence is available. As for the future, the European Parliament is keen to reduce the use and reliance on pesticides and has got member states to come up with national plans to find less toxic alternatives and to get rid of those chemicals that are linked to diseases such as leukaemia and Parkinson's. The UK's National Action Plan for Pesticides is covered by our old friend, no, the Plant Protection Product Sustainable Use Regulations 2012, and the new European regulations are expected to be introduced in December 2018. What it means is that in the future we can expect to see tougher penalties for infringements, stricter controls on pesticide application equipment and more frequent technical inspections of pesticide application equipment. These inspections will happen at least every five years to begin with and then after 2020 at least every three years. All pesticide application equipment will have to be inspected at least once by mid-December 2016 and only equipment that successfully passed this inspection will be legal to use. New equipment will be inspected at least once within a period of five years after purchase. Reports earlier this year that a 43-year-old French wine grower died of leukaemia um, after spraying pesticides for years has uh, put the spotlight on this subject. Apparently there are now 40 or so French farm workers whose profession and the use of pesticides have been officially linked to their diseases such as leukaemia, other cancers and Parkinson's. Knowing the potential dangers is important because you have a legal obligation to ensure that all reasonable precautions are taken to protect humans and the environment. So here are the golden rules, the 10 key things to remember.